Hello students, this is your Bhushan sir. In continuation of wildlife conservation and its management, today we shall understand ex situ conservation. Ex situ conservation means off site conservation where the endangered animals and plants are removed from the threatened habitat and placed in a newer location under the supervision of human beings. It includes examples of zoos, captive breeding sites, aquarium, botanical gardens, seed banks, gene banks and pollen storage. Banks. Now we shall understand various methods of ex situ conservation one by one. First one to start is zoos or zoological gardens. They are also called as zoological parks. In this method, threatened animal species are confined within the enclosures or semi-natural or even open areas displayed to the public and inbred in these sites. Zoos attracts around 450 million visitors every year. Zoos are the places of entertainment, place to observe animal behavior and study the biology of this rare animal species. The zoological garden refers to, hence, the study of animals in confined environment. The term zoo was first used uh, for London Zoological Gardens in 1828 and 1857. Zoos breed many endangered species to increase their numbers and save them from the uh, extinction. Management of animals in zoos includes animal identification, housing, husbandry, health and nutrition, and interaction with the public. Zoos help the animal to secure a uh, food, shelter, social contact, and uh, even their mates. Sean Bram Zoo is the oldest zoo established established in 1759 at Vienna. India's first zoo was established in the year 1800 at Barakpur. World has around 800 zoos that host nearly 3000 species of vertebrates with captive breeding programs. Some of the major zoos of India includes National Zoological Park of Delhi, Mysore Zoo of Karnataka, Rajiv Gandhi Zoological Park of Pune, Indira Gandhi Zoological Park of Vaisak, Nehru Zoological Park of Hyderabad, Nandan Kanan Zoological Park of uh, Bhubaneswar, Aringer Anna Zoological Park of Chennai, Padmaja Naidu Himalayan Zoological Park of Darjeeling, Alipur Zoo of Kolkata, Sakkarbag Zoological Gardens of Zunagad, Lakno Zoo, and High Altitude Zoo of Nainital. Few zoos of Karnataka includes Tiger and Lion Safari of Shimoga. Bellari Zoo, 
Gadag Zoo and Atal Bihari Vajpayee Zoological Park, etc. Well, students, why are zoos are important then? Zoos are the reservoir of many endangered, extinct species of animals. Breeding programs help in captive breeding of these endangered animals and zoos provide awareness of animal diversity across the globe which are under the endangerment. To a researcher or an investigator, zoos provide information about the animal behavior, requirement of the nutrients for its growth, reproductive cycles, the ways to handle them and various methods of conservation of these animals. The next method of exit conservation is botanical gardens. Botanical gardens are educational institutions for scientific workers and public to enlighten on the plant life, especially related to uh, the endangered plant life. It imparts interest among the botanists, home gardeners, nurserymen, horticulturists, then uh, landscape gardeners, forestmen, and even to the tourists. Generally, a botanical garden consists of living uh, plants grown out of doors or under glass in greenhouses or conservatories. The plants here are grown for scientific and educational purposes. The collection of plants that are grown in botanical gardens include native or endemic plants, medicinal plants, aromatic plants, textile plant varieties. There are around 2000 botanical gardens that conserves around 80,000 plant species in them. Few hundred millions of visitors visit these botanical gardens every year. Botanical gardens help in the fields of plant research, systematics, conservational study, and even in public awareness. Conservation of plant diversity in agriculture, forestry, protected areas for pharmaceutical industries, biofuel industries, and even for ecotourism. The botanist of global plant conservation has taken up a strategy to cultivate 75% of the threatened plant species by the end of this year, 2020. These threatened plant species are provided with modified newer environmental conditions so that their conservation is attained with a good growth. Students, after the understanding the need of these botanical gardens in the conservation of threatened plant species, now we shall concentrate on the importance of these botanical gardens. First one is, botanical gardens acts as outdoor laboratories. They provide modified environmental conditions for the growth and conservation of majorly threatened plant species. They serve as the centers of gene pool or germplasm bank for wild economic plant species. Botanical gardens brings in the awareness amongst the people of public on the destruction of ecosystems and environmental degradation also trains the people to plant the trees in the urban areas and even in suburban areas. Botanical gardens helps to conduct research in environmental biology fields. It helps in organizing educational programs to create environmental awareness among the public. 
They act as the conservation areas for many endangered and rare species of plants. They provide plant materials for the research activities and the botanical gardens also serve as pollution indicators. Most endemic species of plants are grown in botanical gardens and they inspire uh, literators or, uh, and even poets by giving the aesthetic pleasure. They are the serene sites for relaxation. They help in the garden therapy to relieve the stress of the mind, which is very popular at present days. Students, with these we are completing the concept of botanical gardens. The next ex situ conservation method is seed bank or seed gene bank. It refers to a, a store in which seeds of endangered plants are conserved at freezing temperature. These seeds remain viable for usage uh, up to 20 years later. Therefore, seed gene bank is a place where seeds are collected, stored in the dormant form at freezing temperatures and helps to preserve the genetic diversity of various seeds. The major reason for seed preservation are as follows. Number one to start is change in climatic conditions makes few plant species to go extinct. Natural disasters recently have altered the viable ecosystem. Diseases have destroyed the plants and crops. Man-made disasters like pollution, war, etc. have changed the natural environment that made non-suitable for uh, these plants. Progressive research activities need to be conducted to restore the economic and medicinal values of uh, indigenous plants. Fine students, how is this preservation method is carried on? To give a bird eye view of it, first the seed of extinct or endangered plant species are collected. The data is recorded that includes name, location, plant description, habitat and soil type etc. The next step is cleaning of seeds to ensure its high quality. It is done by either a sieving process or by blowing of air. The clean seeds are now dried to reduce the moisture content which is suitable for the cold storage. The seeds are now stored in sealed airtight containers. These containers are placed at minus 4 degrees centigrade to freeze the seeds. The seeds remain with their viability for about 10 to 20 years or in simple uh, the dormancy stage of seeds remain for a longer duration in the cryopreservation. During the need, these stored seeds are brought back to the normal uh, room temperature and these seeds are then planted and their seeds further are harvested again for the rebank process. After the understanding the bird I view of the uh, process of storage of seeds, now we shall understand the concept of cryopreservation. As we have seen, it is one of the methods which is widely used in the storage of the bio compounds or bio uh, um, uh, products in the uh, freezing temperatures. Cryopreservation is a newer technology for the preservation of biotic or living components. 
It is done at low freezing temperatures like minus 196 degree centigrade in liquid nitrogen medium. At this temperature, the viability of the products or compounds will remain dormant. The next culture method of ex situ conservation is tissue culture bank. Tissue culture bank refers to the production of plants through micropropagation or clonal propagation of endangered plant species. In simple terms to say, uh, by using the biotechnological techniques, we can preserve the seeds and the tissues were used further to grow into uh, uh, many number of plantlets. Here a small amount of plant tissue is used to raise hundreds of plantlets in laboratory controlled conditions. This micro, uh, micro propagation method helps in commercial production of ornamental plants like archids and fruit bearing plants and trees like bananas etc. The idea of culturing of the cell is given by Hebeland and he tried this methodology to, to produce numerous genetically identical plants. Disease free meristems were also used in plant propagation by taking roots and shoot meristems. We know meristems are uh, continuous dividing cells of the plant. Here uh, in the picture you can see the in vitro plantlets production in test tubes on a nutrient uh, uh, media. The tissue culture methods of plant propagation is known as micropropagation. It uses apical shoots, buds, meristems on suitable nutrient medium for the regeneration of commercial plantlets. This method of, uh, of tissue culture was described by Murashige in 1974. Later 1974, uh, the scientists use the shoot tip map propagation, clonal propagation and vegetative propagation methods. Micropropagation method uses a very small amount of tissue to generate millions of clonal plants or similar plants. The disease resistant plant varieties are cultured here. The long term storage of valuable a uh, germplasm is done by using this cost effective method. Various steps involved in micropropagation, that is, tissue culture, are as follows. Number one, explant is selected, sterilized, and placed on a suitable nutrient medium like MS media. Later, the shoot formation is induced, followed by root, uh, uh, I mean to say root formation or rooting using the plant growth hormones. There are tiny plantlets obtained, uh, which are later transferred to the field. The other biotechnological processes used in ex situ conservation of plants are production of synthetic seeds where embryos of plants are encapsulated in a matrix like sodium alginate. They are commonly called as synthetic seeds or artificial seeds. The next technique is protoplast fusion in plant species. As we know that uh, the plant cell contains a cell wall to its outer side of cell membrane. So this cell wall acts as a barrier. When you remove a plant cell uh, having its cell wall, then 
the left out content that is a plant cell without the cell wall is called as a protoplast. Such protoplasts are used um, to fuse to get the hybrids which cannot be used for the conventional sexual hybridization method. The next method of preservation is in vitro germplasm conservation. Here germplasm refers to the sum total of all genes present in a crop species. The germplasm of endangered plant species is preserved for the future, uh, future usage. A global organization called International Board of Plant Genetic Resources in short, it is called IBPGR, is established to conserve the germplasm of endangered plant species throughout the world. Students, here is a slide. Down is a picture which depicts how exactly this germplasm is collected and stored. The next concept is pollen storage. As we know, pollen is a product of genetic recombination and provide a reliable source for uh, nuclear genetic diversity at its haploid stage. Hence, pollen bank is a method where pollens are stored for germplasm collection. Different types of pollen are collected and stored for future use. By using this pollens, the plants that are facing the extinction can be reproduced. Students, here in the slide, the top towards the left is different types of the pollen and down towards right side is the method how the pollen are collected and stored in pollen bank. Coming on to the method of pollen storage. There are many methods where the pollen are collected and stored. One important method it uh, uh, follows is short term pollen storage. This method includes the effect of temperature and humid, uh, humidity and pollen storage in uh, the organic solvents. The second method is long term pollen storage. In the first type, we make use of the organic solvents with a very low temperatures and humidity. Whereas here in the second method called long term pollen storage, the storage is done at the temperatures above 0 degree centigrade, which will be slowing down the metabolic activity of the pollen, which results further in the gradual decrease and finally the total loss of pollen viability. Thus, for long term preservation, a technique called as cryogenic technique is more uh, promising and it is utilized. As we have understood what exactly is the concept of cryopreservation in the storage of um, the germplasm earlier. The next one is under long term, um, sorry, under the uh, long term pollen storage is storage which is done at sub zero temperatures. Here, the storage temperature is maintained between minus 10 degrees centigrade to minus 34 degrees centigrade. The longevity of bicellular pollen and pollen with the original low content of moisture is successfully used in this particular uh, uh, temperature uh, which can be stored between 1 to 3 years. The third important long term storage technique is freeze or vacuum drying it is also called as lyophilization. Here, the pollen of different taxa, especially desiccation tolerant pollen, can be successfully preserved for a long period of time by freezing or vacuum dry, uh, drying method. 
pollen drying i'm sorry pollen freezing or freeze drying involves the temperatures of minus 60 degree centigrade to minus 80 degree centigrade and it also makes use of the gases like helium or nitrogen uh, for the storage process the next technique involved in long term storage is cryo preservation by deep freezing cryo as we have understood it is refers to uh, 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 ice or snow referring otherwise to a very low temperature so preservation of the bio components at a freezing temperature or at a cold temperature we call it as cryopreservation the long term preservation can also be done by ultra low temperatures which ranges between minus 70 degrees centigrade and minus 196 degrees centigrade. The significance of this storage is in order to continue the productivity, supplementary pollinations like pollen sprays can be implemented for the endangered species of plants. The inbreeding programs uh, requires the uh, uh, need of the pollen parent, but here uh, in this breeding programs, where we store the uh, seeds and pollen in the uh, uh, freezing temperature, requires no need to grow the pollen go, uh, 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 donating parent uh, continuously. The next important feature is that the genetic property can be conserved and can be a source for germplasm in international exchange programs. In simple terms to say, here, the germplasm which is stored of one particular place in, at an uh, international level can be exchanged with the other uh, uh, nation. In the study of pollen allergy and pollen biology, this serves as a continuous source of the pollen donation. Fine students, after we understanding various exitu conservation techniques. Now we shall understand the advantages of exitu conservation methods. Number one, through these techniques, zoos help to study the behavior of plant and animals. In botanical gardens, one can study biology of plants and they become attractive entertainment places and they conserve seeds and germplasm of endangered species. Coming on to the disadvantages of ex situ conservation methods. It includes, number one, if the ex situ methods are not properly managed during the translocation or reintroduction process, the change in climatic conditions affects these species. For example, black-footed ferrets in ex situ conditions decrease uh, uh, their populations and body size further. So body size here gets reduced to uh, uh, 5 to 10 percent of its original. Similarly, in breeding in captivity have negative effects on the life history reproduction and survival of these endangered species. Students with this, we have completed the wildlife conservation and their management. All the concepts that we have discussed under this chapter are important for short answer questions and long answer questions. Any queries and critics can be posted to my personal WhatsApp number uh, thank you all students.